Hey folks, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. I got a request from one of my subscribers who asked me, Harry, you have 50 rib how to cook videos out there, but I didn't see any related to extra tender ribs that I can find in Walmart, Costco, and Sam's. Are these extra tender ribs any good? Do you use them for competition or are they better off just using some of the ribs you recommended that you do in competition. So if you are curious about that question in this episode, I'm going to cook a few ribs and let you guys share the results with me and let you know which one I prefer. Prairie Fresh is IBP and this is my normal rib that I compete with. It is characterized by beautiful marbling and very, very consistent meat texture and has a great bite. Besides Perry Fresh, I also sometimes use Compart Durox, and that's from Compart.com. They are a little bit expensive, but for competition, especially high stakes one, I'll use uh, Compart Durox. The three test cases that we're going to do are going to be the Farmer John, Extra Tender. All Extra Tender means is a euphemism in the industry that they've been injected jacquard vacuum tumble with sodium phosphate solution and flavorings. The second one we're going to test is uh, Smithfield's. This is called the Smithfield Extra Tender. And you notice there's a sign that says Pitmaster Preferred. That's because Smithfield spent a lot of money. Now you guys know Smithfield is now a Chinese company. Chinese bought out Smithfield's. And Smithfield had a program where they would sponsor teams, providing them with the extra tender ribs to cook in competition. And when they win, they actually have extra bonus money. So that's how they ended up with this Pitmaster approved. The secret, that's probably not a secret, everybody knows that a lot of pit masters who compete and win on the competition circuit, they like to use these Smithfields Extra Tender. The plus of this is that it's really inexpensive. Uh, this is like $1.97 a pound, so $1.97 a pound to win a $10,000 check, not a bad return on investment. The third one I found in the store is Horm Homemail. And uh, even though I have never had much luck cooking Hormel pork, because I find that it's kind of hammy, doesn't have a good texture and a little bit mealy. I just gonna take one for the team and buy for you guys. I'm gonna cook a Hormel. So in this shootout, we're gonna do essentially four different cooks, or four different ribs using the same rub and sauce so that I maintain a control with my Prairie Fresh IBP competition rib versus the Farmer John Extra Tender versus the Smithfield Extra Tender versus the Hormel Extra Tender. Folks, I have trimmed the uh, pork bones into one pile. It's made up of the sternum and some rib bones. And we uh, trimmed off the diaphragm, which is kind of stew meat. And we trimmed off the excess meat that is boneless pork. Really amazing for stir fries. And what you want to do is you want to put it into the bags uh, by category. So I have stewed pork, pork, which is this one here. Then I have the pork stir fry, which is the meatless boneless pork. And then I have the sternum bones to make soup. So we always repurpose all the meats that we cook for our YouTube channel, never to waste. Showing respect for the animals who died for our eating pleasure. Applying even rub is to shake it first before you apply it on and apply it at, at least a foot above the meat so that it goes in nice and even. Make sure it's one every square inch. For example, like this part is too much, this part is too little, so you gotta move it around. Yeah, so you don't never rub a rub, you wanna pat the rub down, but you wanna make sure that you have a good wrist action to sprinkle it. That takes a little bit of practice, but after you cook a few thousand ribs, you kind of get a hang of it. And every square inch that's missing uh, rub is no flavor. Too much rub is too salty, so you gotta be very careful. So that's about right. Let's go apply the second layer now. The cherry rub, you shake the bottle first and then apply about a foot above the meat so that it goes evenly. If you have a little spray on the side, don't worry about it. That, that's worth losing some rub, but you wanna get evenness of the product on. Okay, so that's the second layer. And now let's add the third layer, which is the umami bomb. Shake it a little bit and apply about a foot above the meat. Get it nice and even like that. Make sure every square inch of the Meat is covered, no heavy spots and no light spots. You can go back a second time if you need to. 
always shake it and before you apply so that it goes evenly. It's been about three hours and the ribs are ready and you can see from the crust here, perfectly crusted. And the way you do is you scratch it and if the bark doesn't come off, it's ready to go for the next phase. Because these are test ribs, I'm not going to do the whole brown sugar, peach nectar and so on. We're just going to wrap the ribs to cook it until it's tender because these are just going to be for the test of the extra tender meat itself. In a while but we got our four slabs of ribs cooked so I have sample number one which is the control sample number two is the farmer John sample number three is going to be the Smithfield extra tender and then the fourth one is the Hormel and I'm gonna taste them first round without sauce second round with a little bit of sauce uh, using my uh, Carolina tangy so we'll go with this one first so I should start with the control I'm gonna taste the control first nice looking rib it's a beautiful smoke ring and color very good, good flavor, a little bit of smoke, salty, nice smoke ring. So that's my control. So that tastes like a regular Sabedaddy style rib. Here's the first one. The first one is the Farmer John. So the first observation I have is that the meat is really plumpy. It is very, very, seems like very moist and tender. I'm gonna take a bite of that. Beautiful smoke ring, you see that? Wow, immediately you see the moisture and the plumpiness right there. So really good rib. Uh, it actually tastes more tender, more moist than my control rib. So, the uh, Parmesan, thumbs up first. Let's try it now, next one. This is the Smithfield Extra Tender. And this one has been used very successfully by many teams on the competition circuit, winning many awards. Shot now. Mmm, also very moist. The pork flavor is well preserved. The, uh, the Parmesan tastes a little bit of more of the brine, perhaps the injection or the marinade. But this one, uh, Smithfield Extra Tender, has a very natural pork taste. No taste, taste of chemicals at all. So it is very more natural than the Parmesan, the Parmesan is a little bit plumpier. Moving on to the last one, the Hormel. Also beautifully plump. See the beautiful smoke ring, take a bite of it. Pretty good. Very close to my control, Prairie Fresh. Okay, so the finalists are my standard control against the Smithfield Extra Tender. And I have to say that it's a really close tie, but you guys know in my videos, I always inject so I can get my competition rib to the same amount of moisture and tenderness as the Smithfield Extra Tender. Now, if you don't want to go ahead and do what I do, if you buy the Smithfield Tender and cook it in a competition, it's likely that it will do well, just like what I've seen the actual results of all my friends who are competing on a circuit and winning with the extra Smithfield Extra Tender. So, that's the conclusion, and uh, I'm going to try the next round now with the sauce to see if the sauce makes a difference in the final outcome. This is my Carolina Tangy Sauce, and we're going to add a little bit of sauce so that we'll taste it with the sauce this time here. And let's see if the sauce makes a difference in the final taste test. Taking a bite now with the sauce on. Super vinegary. So the sauce really masks the flavor. And uh, once you put the sauce on, that tenderness seems to have gone away. Let me try it with the second one, with Farmer John's. With sauce, I need to be careful with my Carolina Tangy. It's really tangy. Pretty good. So with the sauce on, the Farmer John's tastes pretty good. Very, very moist, very plump, very tender. So let's go back and taste the winner. This is the Smithfield Extra Tender with sauce on, also very good. So the difference between the Farmer John and the Smithfield now has narrowed because of the addition of the sauce. I'm moving to the last one, the Hormel. Try the Hormel now with sauce. Okay, the Hormel one tastes really good with the sauce. So the winner with the sauce, which is very interesting to me, I'm going to go take another bite of my control, is the Hormel has now risen to number one with sauce. And this is, to me, very, very surprising. So the Smithfield now has dropped to a number two. I'm going to take another test. Okay, the Hormel now tastes better. Smithfield number two, the third is going to be the Farmer John. And my rib is not bad with the sauce on, uh, but I think that I'm surprised that the Hormel is the winner with sauce. So again, I want to qualify this by saying that this is just N equals one. Your mileage will vary. So I would like you guys to try these ribs at home in a competition and let me know the result. My video is never over until we get Mr. Bean's fat. So he's been right here. I'm going to go 
check, check Mr. Beans and see which one he likes the best. I have samples, uh, one which is to control, two is going to be the Farmer John, three is going to be the Smithfield, and four is going to be the Hormel. Let's see what Mr. Beans, the barbecue dog, likes. I have uh, four samples for you, Mr. Beans, so I want you to try. Sniff it carefully before you, you try it, okay? Go. Okay, Smith sniff is sniffing. Oh, he's eating number three. That's the Smithfield Extra Tender. And he's eating number two, which is the Farmer John. Moving on to Hormel, and he doesn't like mine. He placed mine last. So there you have it. Mr. Beans picked the uh, Smithfields as first. Then he went to the uh, Farmer John, then he went to Hormel, and then he did mine the last. So there you go. Thanks for stopping by, watching this episode, and if you like it, please comment below. Thanks to my patrons for helping me keep the lights on, and if you guys have any other pressing topics that's uh, kind of burning you, pun intended, uh, please give me, a, give me a shout out and let me know what other episodes you like. Thanks for stopping by, we'll see you guys in the next video.